This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecki is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Gwilda Wiecki's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Science of Magic or endorsed in any manner by Gwilda Wiecki, Relmar McConnell Media Company, its affiliated networks, stations, or employees. Welcome to the Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecka, a program dedicated to uncovering the unified nature of reality and humanity's ever-evolving place as truly galactic beings. For more information on the Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiecka, visit us online at www.thescienceofmagic.net. Welcome to the Science of Magic, a place where science and magic come together to transform fact into evolving truth. We're coming to you through the leader in innovative paranormal programming, the X-Zone Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, and can also be found on our website, thescienceofmagic.net. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. This hour, we'll be exploring, who do you think you are? I was five years old the first time I was asked the question. My stepmother was putting fresh flannel sheets on my step-siblings' beds. I asked if I could have some, too, and she responded, Who do you think you are? At the time, I thought it was a serious question rather than a reprimand, so I pondered it at length, only to find I didn't have an answer. Even at the ripe old age of five, I did know who I was not. I was not who she thought I was, the source of all the family's woes. I was not who I'd been somewhere long ago and far away, And I was not who I would become. Now, here I am, I won't tell you how many years later, and I still can't answer the question. There were times I thought I knew who I was, only to find I was identifying with a job or a role. Occupations and archetypes are what we're doing, but not who we are. Other times I identified with how others saw me, but that proved false as well. For we can only observe each other through our own filters offering a distorted view at best. At first, it was disconcerting, as everyone around me seemed to know who they were. But I finally recognized that it wasn't that they really knew who they were, so much as they were unaware they didn't know. When we think we know who we are, we identify with the concept and become what we've identified with. This freezes us in a false identity and compromises our potential. When we take on an identity... There's an assumption we're isolated and separate that we end at boundaries set by our identity 
at which point other things begin. In reality, we're all part of the quantum soup. It's only our beliefs and identities that separate and disempower us. I now understand that at the same time I'm everything and nothing at all. We must let go of who we think we are in order to become all we can be. As long as we don't identify with our next accomplishment, we're free to continually evolve and recreate our lives. We're living in unprecedented times. Our solar system is entering a more highly charged portion of the galaxy, bathed in increasingly higher frequencies. As a result, everything is becoming much more fluid and malleable. Anything we intend or believe has a greater, more instantaneous impact upon our reality than in times past. The key to evolutionary living is to set clear intent and focus on what we want to accomplish or experience while letting go of what has been. If we can do this, we will soon find ourselves in the presence of people and circumstance supporting our intent. It's up to us to recognize the opportunity and take proper action. All religions speak of faith. This is where faith comes in. If we have faith in the way life works and in our ability to co-create, we'll be able to recognize the opportunities our intent draws to us. If instead we have faith in our limitations, in our victimhood, opportunities will slip by, unnoticed. Just the other day I was again confronted with the question when I unwittingly cut in front of a lady in the grocery store checkout line, Who do you think you are? She snapped irritably. After profusely apologizing for not seeing her, I answered the question for the very first time. Why, who do I think I am? I haven't a clue. And for this, I'm eternally grateful. Our guest this hour is Guy Finley, the acclaimed author of The Secret of Your Immortal Self, The Secret of Letting Go, The Essential Laws of Fearless Living, and 35 other major works that have sold over a million copies in 18 languages worldwide. In addition, he's presented over 4,000 unique self-realization seminars throughout North America and Europe. He's a member of the faculty of Omega Institute and a daily contributor to BeliefNet. After this commercial break, I'll introduce Guy, and together we'll examine identity and the immortal self. Should be divine, so don't go away. You're listening to The Science of Magic. Prior innovative episodes can always be found on our website, thescienceofmagic.net. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Nemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. 
If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today. Know the name, know the person. Or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere, Florida. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine such as hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining rooms can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you visit, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic downtown Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, Old Florida cuisine at its best. Welcome back. This is a Science of Magic dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour, Guy Finley, Director of Life of Learning Foundation and the acclaimed author of many books, including The Secret to Your Immortal Self. Guy's website is guyfinley.org. Guy, thank you for joining us on the Science of Magic. Oh, you're welcome, Gwilda. I'm glad to be with you. <laughs> How did you first become interested in self-realization? I guess I could answer that shortly. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you know what? I, I just, uh, I guess I came into life with it. Uh, it started for me around seven years old, maybe eight. And uh, I had some unusual experiences, which will, will, will leave unsaid right through the age of 12 or 13. And then my work, you know, my studies began in earnest. Uh, as a preteen, I mean, that's really the bottom line, just kind of came into a world that was, uh, most people would say was envious, you know, would be envious of my, uh, my father, uh, was a time magazine man of the decade, uh, uh, a, a pioneer front runner in the entertainment industry, uh, really initiating the whole idea of television talk shows, late night television talk shows before names. Most of the people would never even know anymore. Steve Allen, you know, Johnny Carson, Jack Parr. And, uh, that, that's the world I was raised in. I, my, uh, my pals as kids were the children of the Sinatras, the Minnellis, uh, the Arnezes, you know, the, it was a little rat pack, but it was also a weird life. And uh, there was so much contradiction in it, Gwilda, that even as a child, I mean, around the age of six or seven years old, I'm thinking, something's wrong. Why, why, why when there's so much, is there so much anger? Why with so much prosperity, is there so much pain? Just real contradictions that my little mind at that point, having no knowledge uh, of, a, of a direct kind relative to experience, could put into perspective. So it took me, well... I shouldn't say it took me. It's still taking me. I'm 68 now, and uh, I'm still working hard. Mm. You know, it's it's amazing, isn't it? So when, when people grow up in one circumstance, they can just blame everything on that circumstance. But when, when you grow up into a circumstance where you have what everybody else is mo- yeah. dreaming yeah. about, <laughs> you start to see those contradictions, don't you? Yeah, there's no question about it. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a phenomena I'm grateful for. Because uh, it, although I, you know, I can't say that it that <clears throat> how do I how should I say this? The only thing that changes us that really changes us is a is a, a very direct uh, relationship with experience. Uh, and most of us don't have direct ex- relationship with experience. We experience what our mind tells us is the experience, and that's not the experience. So it takes a long time to sort through the difference between what the mind is talking to us about versus what is being produced by the mind that it's hiding through its conversation. I hope mm. that wasn't too convoluted. 
No, I, I think I get it. So it's, it's like in order to be in an experience, you have to be fully present in the moment rather than yeah. in your mind down the, down the road or in the history. Is that what we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. If your mind is talking to you, you're experiencing your past, period. Mm, wow. So you speak of the enlightened life. What exactly is that? It is what we're talking about, actually. You know, people have a, uh, m- most people have a, a very strange idea about what it means to wake up or to uh, be realized. Uh, it, it's, 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 it is not something that happens in a flash, although there are a number of illuminating moments that lead to a more concrete relationship with direct experience. But the fact is that it's that an enlightened life, as far as I understand it at this point in my work, is is one's, and this is important distinction, is one's capacity, which has to be developed, to remain attentive to what is unfolding in the moment. No commentary about it, no resistance to it, or more accurately, using the innate resistance that appears between ourselves and the the will of a, of a greater moment to, to keep us in that place where, as St. Paul said, we die to ourselves moment to moment by recognizing that the real relationship with life is not one of trying to become something, but rather of seeing what you are being made into and what you can, and what is given up moment to moment. That's, a, I think, a better definition of what it, of an enlightened life. It is one in which the light, this intelligence, this consciousness, real consciousness in us, it is consistently present, and it is observing. It is, in all, for all intents and purposes, conscience is making choices independent of what one would wish or not wish. So I guess I'll stop there. So is it kind of like stepping out of your conditioning, stepping out of the agreed upon reality of the culture and being um, available for what's really going on? You know, those, that, that's a good description of it. But, but w- what we're describing here is not something that the intellect does. It's not, it's not about trying to step out. It's having seen over time what it's like to be so immersed in it and to start realizing the inherent limitations of meeting life from a mind that is conditioned that can only do what it does so the 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 work of in of of realizing oneself is much more a process of negation of nullification than it is of affirming something <clears throat> So it's by eliminating what isn't present? Is, is that what you're talking about? In a, in a way, you could say something like that. It, it, look, in real life, if you were walking down the street, well, the listeners, and, uh, and maybe you were in the shadows of some tall buildings and you suddenly came around a corner, and then because now you're, the sun is at your back and you saw a shadow, you wouldn't think to yourself, oh, that is I, would you? wouldn't think that shadow is me right well well we see the shadow of ourselves that's what thought thought is and thought does thought takes a moment the mind wants to know it's 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 part of this consciousness of being a human being we're born in a body uh, the features are not that different from the higher mammals and and uh, our, our senses uh, are, are, are what basically we derive our identity from, so that our awareness is geared to a sense of separation, so that my senses pick up something, then the mind educated by the past environment, and also just by being part of that nature, it, 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 it begins to know what it's looking at, so that it can determine what action to take. Is that friend or foe? Is that good or bad? Is that pleasurable or painful? But that mind that, that sees life through thought 
that it first uh, put together in order to know what it was looking at, that mind is looking at the shadow of its own content. And no shadow is, 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 is real content. So that means that no thoughts about life are the life that those thoughts define. So is it kind of like um, taking still shots instead of a moving picture? So the mind takes these snapshots and makes decisions yeah, like about that. it. Makes I like decisions that. about it, and it loses yeah. its, its continuity. I like that. Yeah. Well, and I, I, but, but not being too picky here, the thing is that, that this mind, it, <laughs> it, is, it is a master, in quotes, of taking a series of still shots that are seamlessly held together by other parts of us. In other words, um, I'm sitting and, you know, just for fun, we can say when we first started the call, we had a couple problems. You know, the, the call got dropped. So what does the mind do? It immediately identifies the problem. Now, that would be a still shot. What it's identified as the problem isn't the problem. The, the, the call got dropped and we've moved on, but it's still dealing with a sort of resonant, a resonating resistance to the event. Now, that, that still shot is picked up by associations. Oh, gee, uh, is the call going to go forward? What will people think? What's going to happen? And, and associations based in sensation and certain negative emotion pick up the ball and run with it until the next still shot. So even though the, the mind objectifies the, the moment in an image, it, it, it considers the image until the next image takes its place. Is that clear? I think so. So we step out of the continuity of life and fill it in with our past uh, experience from still shot to still shot. Yeah, it, but it's not we who do that, though. That's very important. It is a level of our being. If it was really we who did that, there'd be no chance. Fortunately, something is, is sewn into this uh, consciousness that we have at this level, in this world, that is capable of observing its own limitations. If we weren't capable of observing what we are not, we would never know what we're not, would we? No. So we are given uh, this, this capacity, this living light. You know, different traditions have different names for it. I'm not attached to any, anyone in particular. That, that afford us the, the, the recognition, as an example, let's say uh, you're talking to somebody and you, may, and you say something you wish you hadn't said. Now, there is this social faux pas where one isn't really unhappy because they said what they did, but because uh, rather their image in the eyes of the person they're talking to may be tarnished. But at another level, maybe a person sees, you know what, I... I can't believe I said that. I, I promised myself I would not judge more anymore. I, I didn't want to be cruel, make sarcastic remarks because I tasted them. They're bitter. And then out of us comes that, that biting remark. Well, one of two things can happen in that moment. We can either see, observe clearly, that something just used my mouth, came through my emotions, and did what I don't want to do. It did the evil I don't want to do. And, it, we, and then we remain seeing that. We understand something is acting in me presently that is not I. And now I must, as you said, withdraw. I must be more interested in studying this level of myself than the alternative, which is deflecting that momentary realization, that momentary enlightenment, I might add, by judging myself or by blaming the person who, to whom I spoke for the reason I did that. So we're, we're always... Did. We're going to have to Go pick ahead. up with this on the other side of a break. It's pretty fascinating, I have to tell you. And Guy and I will return to this discussion on the flip side. We're coming to you through the Exxon Broadcast Network. Don't miss the other fine shows and hosts on xzbn.net, and we've got a few of them. You're listening to The Science of Magic, thescienceofmagic.net. I'm Golda Wiecka. There's more inspiration to come, so don't you dare go away.
This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we'll weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. back. This is the Science of Magic, a place where magic and science come together to promote enlightenment. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our special guest this hour is Guy Finley, director of Life of Learning Foundation and the acclaimed author of many books, including The Secret of Your Immortal Self. Guy, we were talking about how sometimes we act outside of what we want to act, 
And then we're, we're confronted with a choice. We can either own what we've done and ponder it and try to change our behavior, or we can drop into guilt, project it out, and blame the other person. What else did you have to say about that? Well, I think that, that we want to make it clear that if we really see what we're talking about, that uh, my wish is to be patient, let's just say that, because I've seen the, the wreckage of being uh, instantly irritated or impatient with my children or my wife or husband. If we really see that that's our intention, our, our, our wish, our hope, and that when the telling moment comes and the impact takes place, which is really nothing other than the teacher appearing when the student is ready, by the way. In that moment, if I see that, I don't have to try to change my behavior. That's the big difference that we're, that we're really aiming to understand here. Anything that tries in me to change my behavior is based on an ideal so that at any moment I'm always trying to achieve what I believe I should be instead of witnessing what is acting in me and being released by that consciousness from that condition. There's an immense difference, Gwilda. Can you tell? Can you hear I me? I can. Mm -hmm. I do hear you. So All what right. we're talk there's two things we're talking about here, if you'd help clarify. The not I and the witness. Yes. So let's, let's go at it this way, because we, we started this conversation asking a little bit about what would be the nature of enlightenment. When right now I, uh, I, I'm in, in southern Oregon, although looking out the window, you wouldn't think that I am, because there's about six inches of snow on the ground and it's <laughs> still coming down. But it is breathtaking. The, it, it's a winter wonderland. It's so quiet. It's so white and green and brown that it's, it's, it's a, a true, in my opinion, blessing to be able to see and to sit in that quietness. Now, can we see, everybody, that I wouldn't have the feeling that I do were it not for what was being revealed outside my window by nature? So that my experience of myself in the moment and what is being revealed outside are really a single event. I, I, I am awakened to parts of my emotions, my senses, that were it not for what was taking place outside, I wouldn't know that part of my own consciousness in the moment. Can we see that? It's being totally present with what's actually going on within and without, and knowing there's no separation. You, but without, but there's no effort. There's no wish for that. It is what it is. The observer, meaning you know, guy sitting here, and what he's observing, nature, are in an accord that is registered by the experience of it, so that there is just the beauty. There is just the quiet. No one there having the experience. Now, if we can see that that's true, I look out maybe an hour from now, and I've been, I've been hand-feeding deer for 30 years on top of this mountain, and here come all my kids. They, they bring up a completely different feeling in me when they appear. Again, the revelation of the moment helps bring out of me a level of consciousness that I'm not present to until the conditions allow it. So that what we're getting at here is that in the moment of the revelation, there is a simultaneous um, awakening of a part of my consciousness that is present when the conditions allow. Everybody still with me? I am. All right. So that means that in a manner of speaking, that the moment itself is a kind of teacher. It brings with it conditions that if I'm present to the conditions, bring up in me a consciousness that is not um, just the mirror of the moment, but is the moment itself. If we can understand 
something like that, then we can take the next big step. And that is, if that's true, that the sense of being whole, happy, kind, compassionate, appears as the conditions evoke those levels of consciousness so that I experience that which is already a part of myself. The same holds true, Gwilda, when it comes to unwanted moments, which is really what we're looking at. The moment I don't want is no different than the moment I do if I understand the purpose of my existence which is to be constantly awakened to and to reconcile the, the, what is being revealed and the nature within which it is being revealed. Mm. What, what do you think stands between most of us and being fully present like that? Oh, we're just, we're, we're just asleep, Golda. We're, we, are, we are addicted to the sense of identity produced by considering our environment instead of being in atonement with it. Lost in an illusion of our own making. Well, I would like to say our, our own making, but again, it's not my making, it's not your making. It is, it is, this, it is this level of consciousness. Look, look we, we're brought into a world where we literally see mom and dad, brothers and sisters, friends and family, respond to moments in one of two ways. Oh, my God, or oh, my God. Mm. Gee, that's wonderful. Oh, my, this is terrible. So that we're, we're educated without knowing it to avoid pain at all costs. We believe as human beings that we're not meant to struggle with anything unless it's a job that we've got where we, we, we're, we're, we imagine we'll make a million bucks so we'll suffer what we call the, the unwanted situation in order to arrive someplace that where we'll know peace and comfort. The trick is that we never arrive there because that nature cannot have enough. So we're, we're caught in a, in a world, literally, of consciousness that cannot recognize itself. It is the carrot, the stick, and the donkey. <laughs> but we have within us something that can gradually recognize. A, a, a metaphor that I like is I, 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 I run the race. Boy, do I run it as best I can. Because I'm convinced that if I can come in, you know, near the front, or God willing, win, I'll get the trophy or some prize that validates the pain I've been through in that race. But we get to the end of the race, we don't get the trophy, or if we do, we can't hold it for long because there's another starting gun, and we have to run another race. That's this level of consciousness. It has to have something outside of itself in order to define itself. And that, Gwilda, is the definition of misery. Mm -hmm. Boy, you, you, that is so true. You know, how, <laughs> how, how can we cultivate this presence and self-realization in a culture, like you say, that doesn't understand or support it? I think, you know, if uh, I'll, I'll turn the question around on you. Have you ever picked up a skillet without a glove? Oh, yes, I've made that mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> who hasn't, right? right? Reach into my fireplace, I've got my wood stove going, and, and not be attentive and touch the side of the stove. I don't have to do that too many times, do I? Before, I, before I'm pretty present to myself, because my body, thank God, is wiser than I am. I'm still off thinking about Bill, Sam, Willie, and Sue, or what <laughs> I have to do, and, and, and I keep in my sleep hurting myself. So, you see, the real condition here isn't what we have to do to find power. What we have to do is wake up and realize what we are involved in that's making us powerless. And that's quite a different paradigm. So, if I understand what you're saying, we are power. We've just forgotten it and aren't uh, connected with ourselves. Well, I'd, I'd just say it differently. Within us lives whatever one calls the divine, mm. ultimate, ultimate power, ultimate intelligence, ultimate love, meaning the, the, the pinnacle of. And we are disconnected from ourselves, and because we are disconnected from ourselves, meaning all of our parts working together, we're disconnected from the Creator. It, it's another good um, metaphor. 
we, we, we are endowed. I mean, it's unbelievable what we can create. It's a miracle. But before we are creators, we are ourselves a creation. And until the understanding is in place that we are instruments of these infinite forces, not their creators, we will mistake the creations we make for being powers of our own. And then we're punished because we can't keep everything in place and wonder why with all these powers we're in so much pain. It's because an instrument, true instrument, does not identify with the music it's making. It is part of the music. We identify with this part of ourselves that makes things, that does things, and then when conditions change, away go those things, and then comes our torment. It's just a different way of understanding ourselves based on, as you said, nullifying an incorrect relationship with the moment. So if we try to hold on to power, um, doesn't it kind of short circuit us, short circuit us yeah. out and blow us up? I mean, it's, yeah, it's well, just a, it's, it just moves through us, right? What's more painful than trying to change another human being because you think your perception of how they should be is basically a, a direct memo from God? Nothing sounds, is more pain. Huh? Sounds like marriage to me. Yeah. <laughs> See, we do, we have a relationship with life based on trying to keep things in place, and then when we haven't the power to do that, uh, uh, hiding the, the moment of powerlessness from ourselves by blaming or shaming the condition held responsible for our suffering. And that disempowers us immediately, doesn't it? We're gone. It's done. <laughs> We're in a pattern that literally is reincarnation, because it is based on resistance. What we resist, we cannot learn from. What we cannot learn from guarantees the lesson will return until we do. You got to hate it when it comes back home to roost, right? Well, one might say that. On the other hand, one might say, thank you. Why do you think Christ said, love thine enemies? Right. I've got to tell you, we got to take another break. We'll pick up with this on the other side. Guy and I will Great. be back shortly, so don't leave us now. This is the Science of Magic, the scienceofmagic.net, the place where altruistic professionals of science and the esoteric create common ground for the betterment of our world. We're brought to you daily by the leader in paranormal, spirituality, and alternative health programming, the X-Zone Broadcast Network. Find our shows on xzbn.net. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 
401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at songsandstoriesforsoldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Welcome back. This is the Science of Magic, bringing together gifted people of service to the world. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. Our guest this hour, Guy Finley, director of Life of Learning Foundation and the acclaimed author of many books, including The Secret of Your Immortal Self. Guy, I've got a, a, a little different direction to go here. Would you speak to what you call self-reliance through self-illumination? It, it, sure, glad to. And it's really not a different direction. What, what self-reliance through self-illumination means is that we are given uh, within us something that is capable of meeting a moment, even the most difficult ones, without fear, anxiety, or anger. And the reason that we have that capacity is because we can understand the moment instead of trying to control it. When we try to control an unwanted moment, the whole idea of controlling it wouldn't come to mind unless there was fear of what the moment means. Would you agree with me? Absolutely. Listeners might want to write this down. There is no such thing as psychological fear 
without negative imagination. I love that. I now, the love beauty that. of that of that idea of that insight is that it means that when we are fearful, it's because our own mind has taken an event and objectified it, put it into a cubby hole that it can recognize. Oh my God, oh, oh look what happened. And then it begins, this mind, to paint a picture wherein if we don't do something, we are under the death threat. Something is going to happen to us that's unmentionable. We will lose something of great value. The mind painting this negative image does not know it is painting it. And then, because it is divided, as we've been talking about, it looks at the image it has made, and it scares itself. <laughs> I love it. So it's like taking the events of the past, painting on the present, and making a rerun out of the future. Absolutely. So that... Our, go ahead. Our guest this hour is Guy Finley, Director of Life Learning Foundation, and the acclaimed author of many books, including The Secret of Your Immortal Self. Guy's website, and you guys want to you, you want to visit this website. It's got a lot of goodies. It's guyfinley.org, G-U-I-F-I-N-L-E-Y dot org. So aren't we talking, you know, we do we have a choice here to go into the reptilian brain and experience fear and live fearful or drop into trusting nature, trusting life? We, uh, a third option. I don't need to trust life. If Do I need to trust that I will fall into a hole if I step in it? I need to see the hole before I step into it. We are, the, uh, again, the passage from the New Testament, I go before you to make the crooked places straight. Mm -hmm. There is something within us that has the capability of wanting to learn the truth of the moment more than it wants to burn over what it says the truth is. Mm -hmm. there, I have an exercise I could give the listeners. might be a good point to do that okay. to help to start us working with that. It's called Stop, Drop, and Endure. Stop, drop, and endure. The stop part is what we've been talking about. Here comes that reaction. I feel the flames flickering under my feet. <laughs> Smoke is coming out of my ears, which is always a dead giveaway. There's a problem. <laughs> uh, I, I feel the immediate onset of a constriction, of some stress or anxiety. Come to a stop. Understand that that's the tell. Something in me is immediately resisting the moment. It might be my own thought. Stop. Come to a dead stop and choose in that moment to be more interested in discovering what's going on than you are in proving to yourself that you know what's going on. Drop. Now that you're observing yourself, witnessing the moment in yourself, you will see all of the associations that we talked about in the first part of the show. You'll see your own mind start to run by your, itself all of these pictures, these negative images, these promises, like a parade of thoughts and feelings you'll begin to see moving through you, and instead of taking them to be you, you'll see them as the effort of a level of self trying to control or otherwise protect itself. That's the drop part. What do you think the last part is, Wilda? Well, maybe climb out of the hole? No, endure. <laughs> no climbing. <laughs> I'm not trying to find a way out. I'm seeing the only thing I was in is my own misunderstanding of myself. Mm. I awaken so, from the dream. So is endure similar to experience? It, you, we could say that. Endure would be... Another way of saying, I consciously agree to suffer this level of myself instead of letting it tell me what, it, what I need to do so that I stop suffering. Our level of being does not want anything that disturbs it. Here's a great lesson. Real life is disturbance itself. 
it is never not changing, which means there's always elements in it that resist the change. If I can learn that the elements in myself that resist change ensure that nothing changes in terms of my experience of it, I'll learn what it means to say, not my will, but thy will be done. Mm -hmm. Because I'll have a new understanding that will give me a new and higher experience of life and of myself. You know, you have this, this lovely statement, and I quote, Everything we can realize in this life or in any kingdom come is already indwelling and part of our consciousness and yes. always has been. Would you please explain what you mean by that? We just covered it. When, <laughs> when, when, we, when we talked in the beginning, I said, I look outside, I see this night sky. I, I'm drawn to the depth of it. I feel the timelessness of it. Well, is the depth and the timelessness in the sky above me? Or is it a celestial feature of my own consciousness that I'm asleep to until something reminds me that that is part of who and what I am? We are not the creators of love, of kindness, of compassion, of patience. We are the instrument of it. There is no greater gift in the world than to recognize and realize that within us is everything we are already looking for outside of us. We just have to wake up and, like the prodigal son, come back home. Mm. We have about a little over two minutes left in this segment, and I don't want to end without talking about this. You mentioned the stream of our celestial possibilities. How are we celestial? Would you go into that for us? We are celestial in the fact that within us is what that there is nothing that we will ever experience that isn't already a part of us. There is nothing we will ever experience that isn't already a part of us for the pain or the pleasure, for the joy or the sorrow. All that we will experience is already a part of our consciousness. It says in the Old Testament, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Listeners, this moment is that beginning. It is never not in creation, and we are intended to be a participant consciously in that celestial activity. How, how can we enter this stream of celestial possibilities? I mean, how can we wake up and get into it? If you want to step into a stream, do you stay on the bank? <laughs> got to get your toes wet. You got to get your toes wet. We have to go into these moments that we, we're trying to avoid at all costs. You know, there's, a, there's, an interesting, there's an interesting shamanic concept in Celtic shamanism, and they speak about the joy-sorrow sine wave. And they said that evolution into your power comes from embracing joy and sorrow in equal measure. This is kind of wow. part of what you're talking about, isn't it? He, he maketh the sun to shine on good and evil alike. Mm. It's all this beautiful parallel that we are intended that we have the possibility of knowing, not intellectually, but of being the very ground of, the, of these converging forces that are giving birth to creation itself moment to moment. It's just that in order to possess, if you want to use that word, the experience, we have to give up the possessions we now have that identify ourselves as being the one apart from that moment. Sell all. It, it's all one beautiful story, Gwilda. I know you hear it and feel it. and it, It's just something we just have to gradually recognize and then risk entering into. Taking that risk to leave our comfort zone. To, to use every moment for the purpose it's given to us. Mm, Learn to yep. do that, and you'll have all that your heart desires. Oh, so beautiful. You know, time flies, and we are out of it. Thank you so much for being on the program. Our guest this hour has been Guy Finley. He's the director of Life Learning Foundation and the acclaimed author of many books, including The Secret of Your Immortal Self. Guy's website, and it's full of really good stuff. If you like this, go to his website. It's guyfinley.org. This has been The Science of Magic. Remember, you can always listen to past thought-provoking episodes on our website, thescienceofmagic.net. Until next time, dear ones, may you be blessed with knowledge and comforted with love as you embrace your immortal self. Searching through the night One people, one nation Searching for the light One people, one nation Coming from the stars One people, one nation
下。